Hey everyone, welcome back. For those of you who are new here, my name is Brittany. I'm a health coach and nutritionist, and my channel is all about helping you to create delicious low FODMAP meals to improve your digestive health. If you're into it, go ahead and subscribe. I put out a new video each week. Okay, so today we are making goulash and cabbage salad, which is two of my favorites. I love goulash because it's like comfort food, but it's also nostalgic. I grew up on Hamburger Helper. I don't know about you guys, but that was like one of the regular things that my mom made almost every week. So I think we would do like the four cheese lasagna. I think that was the one that we would do. But to me, goulash is like the authentic version of Hamburger Helper. So your kids will love this. Like I said, it's gonna be nostalgic for you too. And it's a nice cheesy dish for when like I'm craving something cheesy, but I can't full on stomach a full like mac and cheese. That's just like too much cheese for me. So you'll see, you'll see what I mean. If you've had the um, enchilada mac and cheese and you liked it, you're gonna love this recipe. It's like very, very similar. I also like to pair this dish with cabbage salad because goulash doesn't have a ton of like vegetables in it or anything. And I just think that this cabbage salad is a really nice like Eastern European kind of dish to go with the goulash that's also Eastern European. So I like to eat on theme personally, but I mean a regular green salad would go great with it too. Okay, so today we are going to be using Tinkyata gluten-free pasta. We're using the elbow macaroni, which is great for this dish. I really like it. If you guys have seen my other videos, you know how much I love Tinkyata. It is the best gluten-free pasta out there, I promise you. It can be kind of hard to find in stores, but I think they do sell it online on Amazon too. We're also going to be using two large cans of crushed tomatoes, some parsley, some lactate. I like the whole lactate because it just has more flavor. We're also going to be using paprika, cayenne, and a little bit of ancho chili powder. We're also going to be using some chicken stock powder. I'm using Massel 7 today, but any low FODMAP chicken stock will do. We've also got some, a pound of ground beef here and three quarters of a pound of cheddar. This dish is gonna come together super quick, takes about 30 minutes. So I'm going to actually do our cabbage salad first because I like to let it sit and um, cool in the fridge, but also let the flavors kind of like marinate together, I guess. Um, so yeah, I like to do the cabbage salad first and let it sit and then do the goulash. So let's start with that. Okay, so for our cabbage salad, we're gonna be using one medium green cabbage, some garlic oil, mayonnaise, white wine vinegar, fresh dill, which completely makes this dish, and then blue cheese crumbles. I've also made this dish with gorgonzola and it was equally as good. So cutting into a full cabbage like this can be a little bit awkward. The best way that I've found to do it is to take the cleaver and slide it in like this and then just use gravity. We're gonna get rid of the outer layer. Okay, now we're gonna quarter it and remove the stem. Not the stem, the core. So we're just going to take out this core here by cutting on a diagonal. Same thing as in the coleslaw video. I love the smell of cabbage. I don't know if that's like weird because it does have like kind of a weird smell, but I don't know, I just love it. All right. Okay, so now we're just going to thinly slice this. It's so much easier with this new sharp knife. So there's this uh, restaurant around here. It's called Northwoods Inn in um, La Mirada. I think there's only one of them. Um, but the, the Steakenstein in Pico Rivera, that, that one's like really similar. But it's just like one of those like steak places where like you throw the peanuts on the floor and the waitresses wear like those cute little like, I don't know if they're German, those cute little like sort of like lederhosen dresses, you know? Anyway, so we would go there all the time when I was a kid and they had this salad there. It was a green cabbage salad that came with all your meals and you would either like pick the green one or the red one. Sometimes you would do both. And I just like really missed that salad as an adult. So I decided to 
make my own version of it. I did make a couple improvements on it, um, mostly being the dill, but like you guys already know, I love dill. You totally don't have to make a whole cabbage worth of cabbage salad. My family just loves this stuff, so I'd much rather have too much than not enough. I do wanna go ahead and mention that cabbage is higher on in FODMAPs than a lot of other foods. The low FODMAP serving size is three quarters of a cup, which like I, I wish I could just eat like a whole plate full of this stuff. Okay. So now we have all of our cabbage. And we're gonna add mayonnaise. So I'm starting with four heaping teaspoons of mayonnaise. I'm also going to add two tablespoons of garlic oil. If you see like, I just said two tablespoons and I added four of these because this is so shallow, like two of them actually measure like one measuring tablespoon. So you'll notice like I do that a lot. Okay, now I'm also going to add two tablespoons of white wine vinegar. Okay, so now I'm just pulling off the stems from the fresh dill. I use this entire package. Um, I like to get it from Sprouts. This is what, two thirds of an ounce, but that's like with all of the, stem, the stems and stuff. They also, like right now, dill is in season and they have like big bunches of it that are amazing. I wish I would've got one of those. Cause then I would have leftover dill and I could like put it in everything. I could also just like cut off the top of it and I wouldn't have to pull the stems off. This is probably the most time consuming thing we're doing today. But if you have kids, put them to work. Okay, now that I have all of my dill here without the stems, I'm just gonna give it a, a quick chop, dice, mince. I'm not sure, I'm just gonna cut it up. Okay, now we're just gonna add this to our cabbage. Now we're just gonna toss it together. I always like to start with less um, mayo and garlic oil and vinegar than, I, than I'll need because every cabbage is different. It's gonna be a different size and you can always add more of these things, you, but you can't take it out. <laughs> it's mixing together nicely. I do want a little bit of more moisture in here though. So I'm going to add one more heaping tablespoon of mayonnaise, another tablespoon of garlic oil, and another tablespoon of white wine vinegar. So you wanna be careful not to put too much salt in here because we are gonna add our blue cheese crumbles, which are very salty. So I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of black pepper. White pepper would also be really good in this recipe. Mmm, so much better with the salt. That's how you know, like, if you've added enough salt, your food kinda like comes alive. I know a lot of people have a really tough time judging whether something needs salt or not. Okay, so lastly, we are going to add our blue cheese crumbles. This here is five ounces. I wait to add these till the end because they'll just go flying everywhere and then end up at the bottom of the dish if you like try to mix it, get, mix it in when you're trying to get all the mayonnaise and stuff in there. Okay, now we're just gonna set this aside and we're gonna work on our goulash. Okay, so we're just boiling our pasta over here. We're uh, cooking it according to the package directions. Don't forget to salt your water. And we actually want this pasta to be a little bit al dente because we're actually going to stir it into our sauce and finish cooking it there. You'll see. Okay, so we have our pot heating up here on high heat. I'm using a Dutch oven today, but you can use any big pot with a lid. Okay, now that our pan is hot, we're gonna add our uh, one pound of ground beef. I find that ground beef has enough fat that you don't need to add oil to the pan first if you're going to brown it. I like to add the garlic oil towards the end of this recipe because sometimes I feel like the heat can reduce the garlic flavor a little bit in there. See, when you wait for a cast iron or an enamel pan like this to heat up fully, See how quickly it cooks. I'm using lean ground beef today, but if you are not, you can drain the grease at this point. That's another great reason 
for adding the garlic oil later because if you added the garlic oil first and then browned your beef, you would drain out a lot of the garlic oil while you're draining the grease. Okay, so since that's pretty much brown, we're going to add our tomatoes. Here I have 28 ounces of crushed tomato. Whoops, don't get the lid in there like I did. Here we have another 28 ounces that I've just blended up really quick so it's more like a tomato sauce. If you were curious more about how I do that and why, you should check out my bolognese video where I show you how to do it and I go into the reasons. If you wanted to just do two cr cans of crushed tomato, you totally could. I just like to have like more of like different textures in my sauce. Okay, now we're going to add our chicken stock cubes. I just like to crumble them in. Like I said, these ones are Massel 7, but if you're using Foddy Chicken Soup Base, you would add three, ta three teaspoons or one tablespoon. We're also going to be adding our paprika, cayenne, and ancho chili powder. We're gonna add about, ooh, two tablespoons of garlic oil. And we're gonna turn the heat down. And lastly, we're going to add half a cup of lactate. I like using full fat lactate. It's much better to cook with. And then also, I find that with any milks that have the fat removed, they're actually going to be higher glycemic index because there's no, there's not as much fat to stabilize all of that sugar. Okay, so now we're just going to cover this with the lid ajar and simmer it for about 10 minutes. Okay, so our sauce has been at a strong simmer for about 10 minutes. Now we're going to turn the heat down low and add our pasta and our cheese. We're not going to be adding any more salt today because there is plenty of salt in that, in those chicken stock cubes and in the cheese. So this is gluten-free pasta that I have just boiled and drained. Do not rinse your pasta. Okay, we're just gonna mix this up. Okay, now we're gonna add our cheese. I like to add it in like half and half. It's starting to get nice and gooey. Add the rest of our cheese. This is three quarters of a pound of cheese. I'm actually gonna turn off the stove while I finish stirring this. Mmm, look at that. Now to finish it, we're gonna add our parsley. This is one bunch of parsley that I've cut up. I'm not gonna add all of it. I am going to save some on the side for a garnish. And that's it, we're done. All right guys, there we have it. Gluten-free goulash in 30 minutes. I'm just gonna plate some up here and do a taste test. Oh, was that nice? A nice action shot. Mm -hmm. And you'll see how our cabbage salad, how it's calmed down. I don't know if that's like, that's not really like a food term, but before the cabbage was very like stiff. Now it's calmed down, I don't know. That's why I like to make it ahead of time and let it sit. We've got some here. Oh, it's amazing. So bomb. The parsley just like, just takes it to another level. Like, like I never tried putting fresh parsley in my hamburger helper, but I feel like it'd probably be pretty good. It's not spicy, but there's a little bit of kick in there from the cayenne and the ancho chili powder. And if you don't have ancho chili powder, just use all cayenne, it's fine. It's like gooey and a little bit cheesy, but not overly cheesy. But I do know that when my mom makes this, she likes to add extra cheese. So that is an option. Mm. It's like crisp and refreshing, peppery from the, from the dill. And you get those like little hidden like nuggets of cheese. So good. All right, guys, there you have it. One of my favorite comfort foods in just over 30 minutes. If you have kids, they will love this recipe. I promise you. It's, I know this low FODMAP cooking is specific for people with IBS, but people without IBS can eat it too. 
I, I had a question recently from one of my subscribers asking about, you know, what should she do when she's trying to make something separate for her, something low FODMAP, something for her husband, and this something for her kids. I would suggest making something like this. It's great for the whole family. And it's super easy. Give it a try. If you make it, don't forget to tag me on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next week.